Hi, welcome to our 22nd tutorial on Erlang. Today we're going to clean up our application by making it more RPC friendly. To explain this further, we we'll just get started. Based on tutorial 21 using release 2, now we have our application finally released. Now let's just test to see how RPC compatible it is. Um, as you can see, I've created three batch files two runners and the server runner. So let's run the server and we have the server running and let's run a client. Let's call it runner. We have the runner running. So the first thing we do is to RPC into the SVR node from the full node. So we simply call RPC call. We specify the node we're calling and we're calling the SVR node at 192.168.110. And we specify the module we're calling and we're calling the factorial client client module. And we specify the function we're calling the factorial function and now in a list we specify the parameter and we're setting we're sending factorial with a value of 10. We we'll close and everything works fine we get the result here 3628800 even though it, it, it looks okay but it doesn't look really nice. Now the problem arises with this function let's see factorial client store comments And we want to start coming for our current node, so we send the argument node, and the comment we want to set is hello from foo. Uh, press enter. As you can see, the result came up in the server node saying comment has been saved for foo 192.168.1.10. That could be okay if that is what you're looking for. But in our case, we want the return value to show up in the client side, the full side of the application. So we're going to move into clearing up the current application we have by making it more RPC friendly. So now that we have our project open, the first thing we want to take a look at is the factorial client. So once we have the factorial client opened, the first Thing we change that we're going to use for the, for the purpose of this tutorial would be the factorial function. So we change the factorial function first of all by giving it a variable. We want the results to be stored in a variable called results and to be outputted on the client side by calling IO format in a nice pretty looking format. So IO format and we want to say factorial for squiggle p to denote factorial for value is squiggle p for the result and squiggle n for next line. So we create a list which is going to contain the four squiggle, well, the first parameter here, squiggle p value, and the next one result and that's the end of that. Now the next one we want to change is the store comment and we change the store comment you, basically the store comments should return to us uh, a tuple that contains atomic and OK. Atomic basically means everything executed well in the database and OK is everything went alright. So for this we create uh, a tuple that contains atomic using pattern matching and result and our, the result should be OK equals database server store node name and comment and what we want to do now is to create a case a case a case what we want to do now is to create a case statement by calling case and we want to use result as the type so case 
type result too much space there of now the correct value we want to get is OK so if everything is OK we want to output IO format comment saved for node name squiggle P and next line squiggle N and we put the value into a list so node name so comment saved for node name and in case of anything else I'm just going to display copy and paste this we're going to display comment as not being saved for the node and we don't want to put anything here and we're just going to end our case statement save and finally the other function we want to change for the purpose of this tutorial will be get stamp with comment comment so here we're going to have results equals oh, and we want to have lists for each and inside the for each we want to create an anonymous, an anonymous function that has a tuple that contains comments cm and co for the created on time and let's make our anonymous function we want to output each result by calling IO format received squiggle P created on squiggle P squiggle N and like before we just put a list and the values so CO and CM and this is the end of our anonymous function so we call end and we send the anonymous function results and end so let's just tidy this up a little bit Perfect. Hopefully this should work. Go back to the database server and just clean things up. So for the database server, let's start with the one we're currently using, which is going to be the store. So we want to get rid of this and create a variable result. So result, output it, save and the next one we're using is this it's the same thing get rid of this and just put comments here so we're going to be returning comments to the client and you can finish the rest later so we save this we go back to our factorial server see what we can get rid of here uh, the factorial server seems to be fine because we're returning the calling function so we just save now that that is done so what we do is we rebuild project and we'll run it just to be sure and the same way we always run factory system start and we call store comment yeah comment set for node blah 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 and let's get the comment get comment for node and we have received hello okay perfect everything works just great so we stop this oh, actually now we build the script and the tar so make script factory release and make tar okay perfect now we go to the next section of extracting the files 
So now that we've extracted our tar file, uh, we just open up release and we should have uh, three batch files. Let's just take a look at the batch files to see what it looks like. The first one, the runner just simply has Erlang and just call a new node called full and set the cookie to one, two, three. This is exactly the same thing as the second runner, but the name is bar and the server runner if you were around for the 21st tutorial I went through how I went about making the batch file for the server so we have amnesia set the directory and so on so forth so if you check out tutorial 21 you should have details on this so now that we have the server running and the client running let's call the RPC call so RPC call and we want to call the node SVR at 192.168.1.110 yeah. and we want to call a module called factorial client and a function called factorial and we want to send a parameter of 10 so we get factorial for 10 is blah 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 and on the server side nothing shows up here so let's test it again by calling save comments so I mean store comments and we want to store comment for the current node and the comment will be hello from foo and we get, get comment saved for foo at 192.168.1 and 10 now I think it's time to load in the second node I see it's in release and uh, runner 2 so our second node, the same thing, let's call RPC call and we're going to call same SVR at 192.168.1.110 and same thing factorial client factorial oh no 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 actually we're going to call store comments I just want to test to see if each node is going to receive their own proper comments so store comments for the current node which is node and we want to call we want to say hello from bar and we get comments saved for bar now I'm gonna do an extra one on my Ubuntu computer so I'm gonna pass, pause the recording just to do that so now let's just get the amount of nodes we're connected to so if we go to the server let's call nodes server is connected to full at 192.168.1 bar at 192.168.1 pilo at 192.168.18 this is my Ubuntu computer and yes and we have SVR so three nodes are connected to the server now the moment of truth let's call get comment comment for uh, this node and function is get comment so enter and we get received hello all right I guess we called the wrong comment there oof that was scary okay let's what's it's called get comments with stamp I'm sure this is the right function so get comments with stamp and enter and we get Received hello from foo created on 
the date 2013-624 and here let's call the same thing we should get um, comment from bar so get comments comment with stamp so we're gonna call the get comment with stamp function located in the factorial client and the code is located on the SVR node server so enter and we get received error from bar created on the date to finish off let's crash the server and let's see it restarts just to demonstrate our fault tolerant computer uh, just to demonstrate our fault tolerant system so here we're going to send in an atom hello to a function called factorial and the application crashed and we get a crash report on the server just push this to the side we get a crash report and let's test to see if the server is still running from the other node so we send in 10 and we want factorial of 10 again and we get the answer and let's double check it by using this so factorial of 6 and we get 720 as you can see we've built in a full tolerant system that is very compatible with RPC hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial and I will see you next time